Hi, everyone. This is Bill Cantor with Cantor Wealth Management. I'm in Skokie, Illinois, and today we're going to discuss your best retirement plan, how to eliminate market risk, avoid taxes, and have money for the rest of your life. That is what I do in my practice for my clients, and that is the subject and the title of my book, which I will give you a link how to get a free copy of the book at the end of this presentation. Again, so my name is Bill Cantor. I'm an attorney. I have an MBA. I'm also an investment advisor representative, so I invest money with conservative investing. My motto is financial peace of mind. I'm an author of that book and the previous book before I called Do Away With Your 401k. I'm an estate planning attorney. I've been doing that for over 25 years. I'm also an independent advisor. I do not work for any company. I work for my clients. I'm a financial fiduciary. I have a Series 65 license, which means I have to do what's in the best interest of my clients. I'm a member of the National Ethics Association, a member of the Illinois State Bar Association, and I focus my practice on asset preservation and distribution. Uh, most importantly is I am a financial fiduciary. I have a Series 65, which means I have to do what's in the best interest of my clients and not just what might be suitable for them. So fiduciary is held to a higher standard, and that's the standard I'm held to. And that's important when looking at a financial advisor that they have a, a fiduciary license. Today, we're going to discuss on this webinar the following uh, topics. We're going to discuss the three money traps, what you must avoid in your investing, the five money needs, what you must have with your money, how to avoid the three money traps and achieve the five money needs. Then I'm going to give you an example and we're going to be done. I'll give you my contact information, how to get a copy of the book, and how to contact me. Okay, so we begin, I, I show the retirement bucket. This is the retirement bucket of, of someone. This is people who are putting your money into uh, your, for your retirement savings eventually. When you retire, you have uh, savings going in. You have 401k or IRA money going in, and that makes up your retirement savings. Okay, But then there are spigots or things that take money out of your retirement out of your retirement savings bucket. There's taxes, there's market loss or market risk, and then there's fees. And of course, there's also always uh, healthcare costs that are looming possibly out there. So the question I ask uh, my clients are, if I can remove taxes, or if you can invest in something that would remove taxes from your retirement savings, and would also remove market loss, market risk, and also lower fees to a very little bit, and as well be able to pay for health care costs, is that a good investment? Is that a good place for your money? If I could help you with that, is that worth a conversation? And that's what we're going to discuss today, how to do that. So there's three money traps we're going to discuss. Stock market risk, taxes, and high fees and commissions. And then there's five money needs. There's safety for your money, reasonable growth, lifetime income, liquidity, tax-free, and also a bonus is leaving a legacy and paying for long-term care. So our goal in our investing and in my practice is to eliminate stock market risk, taxes, and high fees, and to achieve safety, growth, income, liquidity, tax-free, and also, if possible, leave a legacy and pay for long-term care. That's what we do. That's what I'm going to show you today how to do that. Paul the Bear Bryant, University of Alabama football coach, one of the most successful football coaches in history, said that offense sells tickets, but defense wins championships. And if you're wondering what does that have to do with retirement planning or financial planning, well, it's because in a financial planning point of view, offense is a great rate of return. You make a lot of money, but it doesn't mean anything, mean anything if you lose money. Defense means no stock market loss, no taxes, and low fees. And if you if you achieve that, you will have a successful retirement. So our goal for our retirement money is to eliminate market risk, eliminate taxes, reduce fees, earn a reasonable rate of return, help pay for possible health care costs, and maybe leave a legacy or provide for a loved, loved ones after you, after you pass. And if I can help you achieve all of these goals, is it worth the conversation? Hopefully it will be, and, and I'll, again, I'll, at the end, I'll give you how to, tell you how to contact me. So this is $100,000 put into two different accounts starting January 1st 
2000. And let me ask you, which do you prefer, the green line or the red line? Most people prefer the green line. Not only do you make more money, specifically 6.4% versus 4.5%, but you do so with a lot less volatility. You don't, you don't have all this loss. Well, the green line is an account that has a growth of 12.5% and a floor of zero, meaning you're never going to earn more than 12.5% and you're never going to earn less than zero. The worst you'll ever do credited to your account is zero. That's the green line. The red line is the S&P 500, the market, which you get all the gain and all the loss. So some years you're going to make 16%, 32%, and some years you're going to lose 37 as has happened. Well, with our system, what we have, not only do you get the green line, but the green line is tax-free while, of course, the red line, whether you earn money and pay dividends, pay taxes when you take your dividends out, or if it's a qualified IRA and it's not subject to tax when you're earning but will be taxed later, at some point the red line is taxable. And we want the green line and we want it tax-free. So our discussion today is, the presentation is about getting on the green line and avoiding the red line. That's what we're going to show how to do that. That's what we want. So there's three money traps. The first one is stock market risk. So if I ask if you lived by a volcano and you knew it was going to erupt every six to eight years, would you stay there or would you move? And most people would say, of course, that you would move. Okay. Well, this is the stock market from 1997 to 2000, the S&P 500. And you see it looks like a big M or depending when you start a big W, but let's say a big M, you start at 97. You make all this gain, then you lose 49%. Then you make more of this gain, you lose 57%. And a loss is coming at some point. A crash is coming. Markets always go up and then they go down. And sometimes you can wait it out and get back in, but if you have to take your money out because you're retired, it's a different situation. So I ask you, what happens? Could, could this happen in the years right before or during your retirement? This crash, these, these large crashes, could that happen? And what if it happened to you? What would your retirement look like? And it happened to Fred the Banker. Now, Fred the Banker is a real person. He's in the subject of, in, he's in my book. He was uh, somebody who couldn't retire when he wanted to because right before he retired, he lost 50% of his money in the market, took out his money, and he's still working years later in the bank because this kind of crash in 2008 uh, hit him. So we don't want that happen to you. And it's not just the last 15 or 17 years. This is the stock market since the mid-60s. You have 68 to 70, you have 36% loss, 48% loss, 27, 33, 47, 56. Markets crash all the time. It's due for one now. And if you spend 20 to 25 years in retirement, you will or may see three to five major corrections. So you need to avoid stock market loss. That's the most important thing. It will kill you if you have a big loss when you're in your retirement and you have to go back to work. That would be terrible. You want to avoid that. Okay, the second money trap is taxes. So Uncle Sam is our silent partner in taxes. His share of our money is, up, is completely up to him, meaning here's a partnership where you put money away, tax deferred, and then the IRS tells you, we will tell you in the future what your tax rates will be. Well, that doesn't seem to be fair, which is why we want to avoid taxes. I think taxes might be going up. This is the tax rate since 1913. You see down here, um, Tax rates were lower, and then they went up in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Tax rates were in the 90% range for the highest uh, earners. The, uh, the average tax return since 1913 is 61%, so we have a ways to go. Taxes may go up in the future, and that's what you'll be paying income, on, income tax on when you take your money out. Uh, David Walker, the former Controller General of the United States and the head of the Government Accountability Office, said that unless we begin to get our fiscal house in order, there's simply no other way to handle our ever running, running debt burdens except by doubling taxes over time. So I don't know if taxes are going to double over time, but it, it does seem that to defer into higher taxes doesn't make much sense. You know, to say that I'm going to put money away now to save taxes and then the taxes will be higher in the future when you have less deductions as well, that doesn't make much sense. Taxes might go up. Uh, in fact, the Gov Congressional Budget Office said that all tax revenue will go towards health care, Social Security, and net interest on the debt by 2032. That means Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, and debt interest is going to be all the tax revenue, which means, if that's the case, there will be no tax revenue left for defense and protection, education, 
transportation infrastructure, and general government spending, because all of it will be spent on Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and, and interest on the debt. Well, there won't be anything left unless, of course, the government raises or creates new taxes. And that's why we want to avoid taxes in our retirement funds. That's the second money trap. The third money trap is excessive fees. CNN Money said that it's not unusual to see some advisors charging 1% to 2% a year to manage a portfolio. And that's on top of the underlying fund fees, which in the case of actively managed funds can easily add another 1% or more to your annual tab. So you're talking 2 to 3% in fees according to CNN Money. Uh, USA Today said it's a crime. They are extracting somewhere around 3.5 to 4.8%, which is the lion's share of what the market returns on investments. As John Sullivan, a registered invest investment advisor, workers end up giving away half of their retirement savings. Forbes magazine did a, a piece on the real cost of owning a mutual fund where they came out and said that the total costs and fees are 3.57%. You have you know, expense ratio fees, asset center management fees, trading expenses. They came out to 3.57%, says Forbes magazine. And finally, uh, John Bogle, the founder of Vanguard, said, we eat up all of our dividends with stock expenses, and the industry, you could easily say, just doesn't give a damn. Fees easily wipe out a huge portion of the yield on stocks, more than 63% of your money. So to summarize market fees and commissions, USA Today said it's somewhere between 35 and 4.8. Forbes Magazine said 3.57. CNN Money said 1 to 2 plus another 1, which is 2 to 3% fees. And John Bogle said it wipes out 63% of your money. So I'm, we're going to show you later on how to get your fees under, under half a percent. And it's important to make sure to avoid excessive fees in your investing. So the three money traps are stock market risk, taxes, and high fees and commission, and we want to try to avoid all of that. Now, the five money needs that we want to achieve are safety, never having market loss, and using an A-rated companies, an A-rated company or companies so there's no default risk, your money is always protected. We want a reasonable growth rate, a reasonable rate of return. We want lifetime income so we never run out of money, even if we live a long time, we have longevity, we'll always have income. We want liquidity so we have access to our money. And as we've been saying, you also want to be tax-free, that way you don't even report the income on your 1040. Of course, with the approval of the IRS, I'm not saying we do anything that is, that is not approved by the IRS. We want to, we want to have tax-free, IRS-approved tax-free investing. So what would achieve all that would be the ideal place for your money. So where, what is that that would be the ideal place for your money? Something that's extremely safe, again, using A-rated companies, something with no stock market loss, with tax-free growth, so you don't report under your 1040, tax-free lifetime distributions, take out your money, don't report it, it's tax-free, tax-free transfer to your heirs if there's anything left, better than a market rate, we're going to use something that had a 27-year average return of 7.78%, even in the last 17 years, with a lot of market downturns, 6.91%. Again, historical results are no guarantee of future performance. You know that. More benefits of this plan is credit approved by statute in many states, including Illinois, where I am. A high contribution limits. You're not limited to only putting in you know, five or 6000 or 18000 a year like some other contribution plans or, or retirement plans. The money passes probate-free to heirs. Even if you don't have a will, the money goes to your heirs directly, immediately. There's no pre-59.5 withdrawal penalty like there is with your 401k or IRA where you have a 10% penalty if you take it out early. There's no required minimum distribution at age 70.5 like an IRA or 401k has where you've got to take your money out even and pay taxes even if you don't want to. Account has liquidity in it. There's low costs and fees. And we're going to use an account with a 0% floor and a 13.5% cap similar to what we saw before so you, that's why you get this good rate with the worst you'll ever do is credit it to your account is zero. The most you'll ever do in this is 13 and a half. Some companies have 12 and a half. Some have 13. Some have 13 and a half. This illustration I'm going to show you in a little bit has 13 and a half percent. It also can help pay for long-term health care costs. So what is this account that has it's safe and it's tax-free and it's a great growth rate? So what this is is a special kind of life insurance that is what I call high cash value low death benefit life insurance called Index Universal Life Insurance, or IUL, where we purchase the smallest amount of life insurance 
required by the IRS, Section 7702, so that the policy remains tax-free, again, according to IRS guidelines, and the rest of the money goes into the tax-free cash value, which is according to IRS Section 72E. So notice here, I said that it's life insurance where we buy the smallest amount of life insurance. That is, we don't buy a lot of life insurance. We buy just what we need to keep the account tax-free according to the IRS, because the IRS says life insurance is tax-free. And the rest of the money goes into the tax-free cash value. Now, people hear life insurance, and people say, oh, life insurance is whole life and it's expensive. Well, we'll talk about fees in a minute, but I want to point out this is not whole life insurance. So let me give you a two-minute uh, little lesson in life insurance. So there's two kinds of life insurance. There's term, and most people at this point say, yeah, term and whole. That's not true. There's term and there's permanent, right? Term insurance, the term will end in 10, 20, or 30 years, whatever the term is. Even if you want to keep on paying your premiums, for all intents and purposes, the term is over. Permanent life insurance will be there for life as long as you pay your premiums or the premiums are paid out of the policy, if there's enough in there. In permanent life insurance, some of your premium goes to purchase death benefit and some goes into the tax-free cash value. So you have both life insurance and cash value. With term, it's less costly and you're only buying death benefit. That doesn't mean it's bad, but it doesn't mean that there won't be any cash buildup because you're just buying death benefit. With permanent, there's three kinds of permanent life insurance, whole, universal, and variable. Well, variable life insurance, your money is in the market. It's at risk. It's almost never a good idea in my opinion, and we're not at all talking about variable life insurance. Of the permanent life insurance that's fixed, that is not variable, there's whole and universal. And they're similar, but there are some major differences. So with whole life insurance, your money grows Again, you put some money in, some money goes towards death benefit, the rest goes into cash value. Your money in the cash value grows based on a declared annual dividend that they make. The company gives you two, three, four, or five, whatever it is, percent. But you cannot customize the death benefit. They give you what the death benefit is based on your underwriting class. It's determined for you based on your age and how healthy you are. You can't, cannot see the fees and expense charges report in the policy because it is what it is because you're buying what they tell you in terms of the life insurance. And again, there's no, index, there's no index to arbitrage loans. We're not talking about that today. With universal life or index universal life, your money can grow based on an external index with a cap of 13 and a half and a floor of zero like we saw before, where some years will get 13 and a half and some years will get a zero and some years will get in between, never more than 13 and a half, never less than zero credited to your account. The average is usually 6 to 7%. But the big difference we're talking about now is that you can purchase less death benefit so that more of your premium dollars goes into your tax-free cash value. And you can see the fees and expense report and make sure they're with, as low as possible within the IRS guidelines. These points is why universal life is what we use for cash value because, again, you can make sure to buy just the IRS minimum, purchase just less death benefit, the minimum required death benefit, to keep the policy called life insurance tax and therefore tax-free, and the rest of the money goes to the cash value. So it's a much lower fee structure on this kind of policy. Okay. So this is the way the crediting of the IUL, or Index Universal Life Policy, works. Again, we're going to use a 0% floor and a 13.5% cap. So let's say in 1990, you started this policy, and you have money in there, and the market went down from January 1st to December 31st, in our example, or the anniversary of your policy, I'm assuming here December, January through December, the market went down 6.56%. 6 6 that was the return of the S&P. So you would have gotten zero credit to your account. Right? Then in 91, the market went up 26%, as it often does after a loss, it goes up. Well, you would have gotten the cap of 13.5 credited to your account. The next year, in 92, the market went up 4.46. So you get the 4.46 because you get up to the cap of 13.5. All right, and this continues every year. In these years, in the mid-90s, when you, the market went 34, th made 34%, 20, 31, 26, 19, you would have gotten 13 and a half because you get up to the cap each year. And of course, that's tax-free because it's in the cash value life insurance. Whereas when the market crashed, it went down 10, 13, 23 here, 38% in 2008, you got zero credited to your account because the worst you can earn is 0% when the market goes down or is even, you get 0%. That's the worst you're going to do. So this account has averaged 7.78% over those 17 years, and even 6.91% since, since the year 2000. Again, this is all tax-free. 
with no risk of market loss. Because the worst you do is zero, and since it's in life insurance, it's all tax-free. You don't report the gain, and you make the gain, and if you take money out, you also don't report that. It's tax-free. It's life insurance. This is an actual statement for someone. If you can see, a real client I have with North American Life Insurance Company. So they started the year, you can see down here, with $25,000 in their account. Uh, the value of the S&P on 11-3-16 was 2,088. The value a year later of the S&P on January 3rd, 2017 was 2587. That's a gain of 23% the growth in the policy, the growth rather in the S&P and the index. This person had a cap of 12.5%, so the cap applied to him, which means he made 12.5% on $25,000, or this number here, if you see, is $3,241. That's 12.5% on a tax-free basis with no market risk at all. So not every year is going to be this good, but in most years, many years, you get the cap. This person got the 12.5% tax-free credit to their account. Okay. So this is how funds grow with indexing. The annual gains are locked in, and your account can never go lower. Once you get this 12.5 or 13 or 13.5, depending on the company, gain, it can't go any lower than that. Your account, your gain is locked in. That's how this works. Again, 6.4% with a lot less volatility in the IUL, in the Index Universal Life account, all tax-free, whereas the stock market is taxable. So you end up with much more money, plus you have life insurance. IUL sales hit a record in 2016. For all of 2016, IUL sales toppled, topped uh, $1.97 billion, an all-time high for the product. That compares with 2015 sales of $1.86 billion, a 5.9% increase. So IUL is not a new thing. It's not a small thing. It has billions of dollars in sales uh, throughout the market. Now, there are costs in an IUL policy like there are in everything. Let's discuss the costs uh, over the lifetime of a typical IUL policy, and I will show you in the next slide about this. The costs are somewhere between a half and 1.5%. But for that one, half or 1.5% cost, you're also buying a tax-free life insurance policy and a cash value account with tax-free growth and tax-free income, right? That's, that's the key here. How much would you be willing to pay someone to eliminate your taxes and market risk? You know, go to your broker and say, what are your fees? He tells you their fees, and then you say, well, I want the tax-free account. And you can't just choose a tax-free account, but if you could, you'd spend a lot more for that. Well, that's what you get with the life insurance with the Index Universal Life, the IUL. A stock market loss of 25% is a pretty big fee. You know, what is the stock market's fee when it loses you a quarter of your money? Even if you're only paying a small fee to your broker, to him or her, a 25% fee to the market is a big loss. IOL costs also are all set out in the schedule. When you start, you have a schedule. It's not a guarantee, a contract, but it is a schedule what they're pricing the product at. Uh, ask your broker to give you all of the account fees for the next 40 years in your account. We give that to someone when we sell them an, an IUL policy. So this is the cost in the policy. Now, there's a lot of numbers here. I'm not going to go through this slide in detail. I have another video if you want to go to www.iulfees.com that discusses this in de detail. Again, it's iulfees.com. All I want to point out to you is on this side is the IUL policy, and on this side is an investment account. It's 35 years from age 51 to age 85 of a policy, and you'll see that the total fees that you pay in the IUL policy is $68,000. The total fees you pay in the brokerage account is $139,000, more than double. See? All the fees, these, these red numbers are all the fees you pay in a policy taken from the policy expense report. These three columns, this is the total. 68332 is what you will pay over 35 years, total fees. These are the fees at 1.5%. Now, we saw before that some fees are 2, 3, 3.5, 4%. Three I'm running this at 1.5% fees for the life of a policy, for the life of your investment account. Your fees will be $139,000. More than that, at some point, taxes need to be paid out of an of of investment account, whether when you're going on and take, paying dividends, taking dividends, or if it's a qualified account, it's an IRA or 401k, eventually you've got to pay taxes. And if you put that in here, Besides the $139,000 in fees, you also have to pay taxes of $121,000 if your tax rate is 20%. So if you add the taxes 
to the fees, you're talking about $260,000 of fees versus $68,000. But even if you're getting into the taxes for a minute, just the $139,000 versus $68,000 means that the fees in an IUL policy is half of what it is in an investment account if the investment account is only at 1.5%. And the reason for that is, is because even though you start out with the cost of insurance being higher and, and a larger percentage, 17%, 8%, 6%, in the, front, in, the, up in, the, in, the, in the first few years of the policy, if you'll notice in year 25 of the policy, in an IUL policy, your fees are less than a quarter of a percent to manage this $350,000, which is growing tax-free. Whereas in a brokerage account in year 25, there's 335 in the account, assuming not a major market loss. I'm, I'm, I'm growing this account at 7%. I'm growing the IUL account at 7%. I'm apples to apples. But although you have 335,000, you're paying the 1.5% on that. Whereas in the IUL, you're paying at this point, since you have money in the policy already, you're paying less than a quarter of a percent. Plus, there's $350,000 of tax-free death benefit. If you died any, long, any way along the way, you have all this death benefit here that goes immediately from day one to your heirs. So all I'm trying to illustrate here is that fees are potentially half of what they are in a brokerage account, fees in, a, in an IUL policy. Okay, so let me give you an, an example here. Uh, Lynn, based on a real client I had, she, at age 40, she started a policy with $1,000 a month, 12000 a year, until age 65, it's 25 years, or $300,000 she put in the policy over 25 years, $1,000 a month. She retires at age 65, she has an annual lifetime tax-free income of $63,187. That's what's illustrated at 7%. Again, the, market, the, the policy has performed better than that, but it's an illustration. No one knows what 25 years of growth is going to really, really give her. At age 90, she will have taken out $63,000 for 25 years, which is $1,579,000 tax-free. Plus, she still has $494,000 of tax-free death benefit life insurance that she will pass to her heirs, meaning the total benefit for this plan is $2 million, and that's on a $300,000 investment. Okay? Not only that, but the life insurance, while she's alive, this 494 can be advanced to her for long-term care health costs. The company will advance you your death benefit while you're alive to help pay your health costs. This is all done with no market risk, no tax, and the average annual cost in this policy is 0.7%. She started young. She started when her cost of insurance was less. So before we saw uh, the average is a little bit more, but this is 0.7 for the entire average, not 1.5, not 3.5, 0.7%, less than 1% is her, is, her cost, is her annual average cost in her policy. Uh, if she were to do the same thing, earning 7% and trying to take out from age 40 to age 65 and then try to take out uh, 63187 she would run out of money at age 81 with no life insurance. And again, if she had a market risk, market loss in the middle, she would have not been able to take out even that much money. So it's a much more stable account, less fees, and it's all tax-free. Okay, there are three drawbacks to an index universal life policy that you have to be aware of. Number one, it's not a short-term vehicle. Because there are mortality costs or life insurance up front, in the, it's higher in the beginning, the cost, so you don't want to just go in and take out your money in the first couple of years. You can get a rider that gives you liquidity and gives you access to all your money, but it's not structured for that. It should be considered something that is a longer-term vehicle. Number two, you need to fund the plan or lower the death benefit, meaning if you have a plan to fund for $1,000 a month for, for a number of years, whether it's 25 years or five years or three years, if you have a funding plan, you should be able, you should have, you should set it up that you will make those payments. If not, it's okay. You just have to lower the cost of insurance by lowering the death benefit. You can do that with a phone call, and therefore they take less costs out of your policy. And you cannot put qualified money, IRA or 401k money, into life insurance, any life insurance. This as well. You'd have to take the money out and pay the taxes first on it, and then put the money in. And whether that's a good strategy is a longer discussion that may or may not be applicable. But you cannot put, you can't just roll over your 401k or IRA into life insurance. Okay, so there's the three many traps and the five many needs. I showed you that index universal life insurance can eliminate the three money traps and give you the safety, growth, income, liquidity, uh, and tax-free account, plus leave a legacy, life insurance, plus pay for long-term care. IUL can accomplish all of this. Uh, most people spend more time 
planning a two to three week vacation than they do planning a 20 to 30 year retirement. So we have a solution for that, and that is contact me at, again, Cantor Wealth Management. My, my email is bill at cantorwm.com. My uh, phone number is 847-674-6470. We can go over, see this plan if it's for you, what the numbers would look like for you. We can run some illustrations. If you want a free copy of my book, you can go to www.yourbestretirementplan.com and uh, there's information there how to get a copy of the book. Uh, any questions, please call me, 847-674-6470 or bill at cancerwm.com. I look forward to working with you and, uh, and trying to help you achieve a, a, a better retirement, achieve your best retirement plan, and how to eliminate market risk, avoid taxes, and have money for the rest of your life. Thanks.